Hello, my name is Laura Hamilton. I'm a consultant trauma and orthopaedic surgeon in the hand department of the Brighton and Sussex University Hospital Trust in the south of England. I have here our lead hand therapist, Penny Stewart, and we're going to show you a simple technique for application of a dorsal back slab for distal radius fractures. The important things to take home are the ability to see the MCPJ creases so the patient can make a full fist in the plaster. Likewise, the thumb base must also be free and the alignment must be neutral. Bending the wrist does not affect the fracture and does not help to reduce the fracture and can cause stiffness. The wrist must be in neutral. Okay, so if I can just get you guys to apply traction. So after appropriate analgesia is given, traction is applied for two minutes, the distal radius fracture is disimpacted and then reduced and held by three-point moulding. So the easiest way to get three-point moulding is to cut a corner out of the back slab so that when it is applied, it wraps around the volar aspect of the radius. You still must always leave a free section to allow for swelling. So I'll just pop that on now for you. So it is always worth reducing the fracture and applying a well-moulded pasta, even if you think the patient is going to need surgery, as this helps with pain relief and allows them to exercise the fingers. When applying the bandage and also the wall, always come out through the thumb so that you don't tighten the first web space. You should only ever have two passes in the first web space and minimal padding on the dorsal radius where you want to apply pressure. Put some tape on that. This is the important part. You need to be very clear, i just angle you down. The distal radius is here, the fracture is here. So your moulding must be here. I'm doing, we're holding the upper arm proximally. I'm putting pressure on the volar aspect of the forearm, proximal to the fracture. And then I'm applying dorsal pressure at the actual site of the distal radius, just distal to the fracture. So it's the three point moulding that will reduce the fracture. You can see here I'm not flexing the wrist, we're not ulnar or radially deviating the wrist. It's just simple traction. And it's that three-point moulding that will hold the radius. Once the plaster is set, if you just relax there now, if we just show you the position it's in. That's that, relax. You can see here, free movement of the fingers and thumb, neutral alignment of the wrist, and there's a very slight radial deviation which occurs when you traction the index and your thumb but it doesn't need to be overtly to the side. Okay, and that's a simple distal radius back slab.